Hi, I'm Steve Rose. I've been a chef for 38 years, was the owner of the greenest restaurant in the entire San Francisco Bay Area, and now I'm a farmer here at Rose Ranch. We do things green around here. What sets me apart is that green is not just a buzzword like a lot of people use. Green is an operative word and it really is easy to do. I'm gonna share with you my secrets on how to do this at home. We're gonna have fun and living green, living truly green is really a blast. I believe that people want to learn how to live this way, they just don't know how to go about it. And that's the whole purpose of the show, is to teach people how to do it. I'm going to show you the way, show you the pathway to green living. Welcome to the Organic Rose. <clears throat> Jeffrey, I'm Steve. Hey. Good to meet you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. You're with Solar Sonoma County. That's right. What's your day job like? What do you do? Well, we're a nonprofit program of the Center for Climate Protection here in Sonoma County. We've been uh, doing work for over 15 years, helping people with their solar energy decisions. Uh, we, we actually do a couple of different things. Number one, we work with homeowners and small business owners who are considering solar for their homes. Uh, they have a lot of questions, they want to know how it works, they want to know how it will work for them, whether it pencils out financially. We answer all those questions for them, and then we also can connect them with local solar installer professional companies who will do the job for them, and then oversee that whole process on their behalf. Uh, we do that all at no cost, we're a nonprofit, and we don't charge for that service. On the other side, we also work with the industry and with the policy regulators at the state level uh, and to some extent the national level, to make sure that the, the rules governing solar remain strong and favorable for rooftop solar. How does a solar system work in lay terms? Well, basically what you have is two components. The, the, the primary component that most people are familiar with is the solar panel or module itself. Uh, we're actually sitting under a, an elevated panel system right now. The panels are about two by three feet and they, they consist of a, a silica crystalline matrix that uh, through an ionic process converts the, this, the energy from the solar rays to an electric potential. So the panel emits energy or power in the form of direct current, like a battery okay. in your flashlight. The other component then is the alternating converter, the alternating current converter, which is called an inverter. Um, our homes run on alternating current. So that device takes the DC from the panel, converts it to alternating current, which is then fed right into the panel at your uh, circuit breakers. So why don't they call it a converter instead of an inverter? Well, it's an inverter. <laughs> it, it just is. <laughs> converter goes the other direction. Okay. So now you have that energy, where does it go? Well, the solar panels, generally speaking, in, in terms of the, the homeowner, are mounted um, behind, well, there's two answers to that question, behind the meter, Okay. So they're, they're behind the meter, behind what your local utility company can see. So you'll, you'll be generating electricity and maybe using it internally in your house and, it, and the utility never knows about it. So it's behind the meter energy production. Where they're mounted can be either on your roof, which is a typical location, or a ground mount close to the ground, or in the case that w what we have here, a canopy. You can actually mount the, the panels up high so that you can sit underneath them and, and the panels provide shade. I will say another use for a canopy is over your car. Yeah. You know, who, who wants to park their car in the direct sun? So you can create a, a car parking canopy, solar canopy. Uh, we also have some people here in the county who have built canopies for cows and we call them cow ports. They actually put them in a pasture and, and they provide shade for the cattle. Wow. Yeah. So there are a lot of ways to utilize the solar panels to create a cooling environment passively. Interesting, interesting. So when, the, when you have the energy is generated, it goes into the house to be, to be consumed, be used, correct? Mm -hmm. And then what's not used goes back out onto the grid, correct? That's correct. Now does that service, does that energy, if we have this as a box, this is, this is energy right here. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's in the inverter, it's going out to the grid, mm -hmm. does it, is it used by just the neighbors in the local area? It, electricity is a funny thing. It can't, it can't be stored inherently. It, it, it has to be used the moment it's created. And so uh, if there's a local consumer in your neighborhood, yeah, they'll use it. But it, once it gets out on the grid, it kind of, 
it's it's out of our control where it goes. Okay. Um, uh, it's important to note uh, in in this context that the the systems that we're talking about, these solar systems, are are grid tied systems. They are they are always connected to the local grid and the local energy provider. Um, they're not off grid for the most part. Okay. Uh, so um, the the whole system of managing energy on the grid to and fro, you know, energy across state lines, it's, it's a really complicated process. But one of the things about rooftop solar and local distributed solar is that it's, it's going to lessen the need for large scale transmission over long distances because increasingly we're producing our power locally at the point where it's used. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be seeing in, in my future, the future I envision, a lot less uh, large scale transmission of energy. If, if we can go down this path of local distributed solar on rooftops. Do you see, do you see other states coming online? I mean, we're in California, yeah. and California, pretty much everybody knows about solar, mm -hmm. and it's, I'm, I'm not sure what the percentages are on how many, how many res residential uses are happening in, in California right now, but do you think that other states will eventually catch up with us? Um, I know some are, some are trying. Yeah, I, in terms of, it, California is definitely a leader. It's what, the sixth largest economy in the world? Yeah. Um, we're a leader in so many ways. I, I don't know uh, to the extent that other states will catch up, but they're definitely going to be adopting solar. When, it, one of the things that we do in California is we establish a precedent and we, we, live, we set examples for the rest of the world to live by. Um, so I, I definitely see other, other states coming along. Um, you know, the incentives and the rate structures that govern solar are set by the lo at the state level. Okay. So it does require leadership and policy among the local state legislators to uh, ensure that solar will work effectively in those given states. And California, we're very fortunate to have really strong rules governing net metering, the rule that is called net metering, which establishes the rates um, that uh, solar energy is paid uh, we have good strong rates here. So can you explain how that works as far as we generate, this property generates excess energy that it does not consume and it right. goes to the grid. Right. So how then are we reimbursed for that? Well here in California, we, uh, the, the energy that's produced by our solar panels that goes out the meter is, is compensated. We're, we're paid for that at full retail rate for that time of day because generally it, the energy production is is compensated for based on the time of day that it's being used. Energy costs more or less depending on what time of day it is. So you generate an electron, it goes out, a kilowatt goes out the meter, you're paid full retail for that kilowatt. And then in the evening when you run your washer or the hot tub or charge your electric car, you buy that same kilowatt back for roughly the same price. Okay. So it's called, that's the net energy metering. And is there such a thing as zeroing out that, in other words, that is it possible that you can build a system that will provide all the energy that this particular house needs so there's no money out of pocket? Right. When you, when you work with your contractor, your solar installer, they will ask you a lot of questions. They'll look at your historical usage through your local utility. They'll ask you if you plan to get an electric vehicle, if you plan to convert your gas furnace to electric heat pump, those sorts of questions. And then based on all that information, they will size the system accordingly. And they are allowed under law, state law, to s oversize the system by a certain percentage, roughly 20 to 25 percent, so that you actually have the potential to end up generating more than you use. And at, being reimbursed for it. Right. And so um, most utilities will, under the net metering programs, will um, transfer your credits that you are, that you crew if you generate more in the, in a month than you use they will transfer the surplus credits to the next month and so on down the line and here in in uh, California at the end of 12 months there's a true up period okay and then um, the util different utilities have different ways of compensating you for that whether they continue to roll it over or they pay you the uh, what they call net surplus compensation they actually write a check to you for no any energy that you've produced over and above what you've used. So, so they'll actually, they'll give you hard cash in lieu of credits for mm -hmm. gas or what have you. Another, another right. After 12 months, that's how okay. we do it here in Sonoma County through our Community Choice Energy Program. We have a, a Community Choice Energy Provider in Sonoma County that, and that's the way they work. What would, I mean, this is what you do every day. 
What's the usage of in Sonoma County as far as solar? Uh, how do you determine how many people have solar versus how many people don't have solar? Are there, are there any percentages? It's, it's a pretty high adoption rate. I can tell you that in, on a comparative scale, Sonoma County had one of the highest per capita uh, uses of solar of any county in the state. Um, and we continue to rank very high. Things are changing all the time, um, but we have a very high adoption rate. It, but at the same time, there's plenty of opportunity for expanding solar. There, I mean, all you have to do is get on a Google map and look down at the rooftops and see how few homes <laughs> have solar. And there, there's plenty of opportunity for expanding the footprint for a rooftop solar. Um, and one of the things I, I mentioned briefly earlier is the, the concept of electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are playing an increasingly important role in our lives as they, bec as they become more mature and the charging infrastructure expands. But imagine a, a world where, and I live in this world, I have solar on my roof and I have an electric car in the garage. My car is powered by the sun, that I, uh, by the energy I produce from the sun on my own roof. Uh, I'm essentially driving that car for free. And, and you'll find that it, it, it starts to become a game almost. Once you've got the solar on your roof, you think, okay, I can get the electric car. What else can I do? Oh, I can replace the gas furnace with an electric heat pump furnace. I can replace my hot tub when it burns out with uh, a 220 volt hot tub. And on down the line, eventually the, what we're doing is we're fuel switching. We're fuel, we're fuel switching away from fossil fuels to electrical electrical and we're using and we're providing that electricity from the sun and that is a really exciting world and that i mean that's definitely going to help slow down climate change right i mean is climate change possible to, can we possibly slow it down well that um i believe i'm an optimist and <laughs> <laughs> i believe that um that that i will survive this and my children and their grandchildren were in seven generations will survive this but climate change is a very real threat uh it's known to be human induced um, I know that building energy production in buildings, agriculture, and transportation are the three leading causes of climate change. So anything that we can do to reduce those uh, with solar can only even improve our odds of getting through this, this terrible crisis that we face ourselves, that we're faced with right now. Um, you know, and energy to power the buildings and energy to power the cars can all come from the sun if we do it right. The important thing about solar is that it can be done in two ways. It can be done on a rooftop locally, or it can be done in large scale utility form, remote, remote from where it's going to be used, out in you know, fallowed farmland or the desert. Um, I, I believe very strongly that solar should be produced locally, and that's what we're here talking about today. We're putting solar on our rooftops, community solar in our communities, so that we're not having to transport it over long distances. Th that's a really exciting thing too. Are there are there, are there utility companies throughout the country that have large arrays that, that are actually generating the own, their own electricity to sell? Yeah, there are. There are a lot of different models, uh, aside from the local distributed generation that we're talking about here. Um, power utility companies will, can negotiate with power generators to purchase solar energy on the wholesale market okay. and those are the ones that you'll see driving through the central valley or the mojave desert that cover vast stretches of, of public land in many cases um, that's energy that's being produced purely to make money and it, it's being sold on the wholesale market and the the utilities will negotiate long-term purchase agreements for that power um, so that's happening also but on a smaller scale on a community scale local energy providers such as the one we have here in Sonoma County are working to develop s smaller scale but utility scale solar panel systems so that people who have homes that maybe can't host panels on their roof for one reason or another they don't maybe they don't own the house maybe they're right. renters maybe they have big shade trees they live in the forest there's a big <coughs> redwood tree casting a shadow they can't put solar on the roof they would like to have an option and so community solar community scale solar is one of those options. And that can be either done through a local uh, energy utility or through an independent third party process where people actually invest in a solar farm in, in a neighboring community or out, out on the edge of town. How do you go about, I know the latest thing that I've, that I've read about and, and heard about are these solar batteries. How, how does that work? So battery technology plays an increasingly important role in solar. It's important to note that 
at, at the present time, with a grid-tied system, batteries are definitely not required. Uh, the, the grid is actually functioning as a de facto battery. Uh, you charge the grid during the day, you use power from the grid in the evening when the sun's not shining. What is a grid? A grid is basically, a def the definition of the grid is the power generation and the transmission distribution structure that, that gets electricity from where it's created to your home. That's the grid. Historically, energy has been produced by hydroelectric. That was probably the first, first form of generation. Also coal, uh, natural gas, nuclear, um, wind, industrial utility scale solar. These are all different ways to generate energy and it's transported through the grid to your home. So battery technology uh, can be utilized in two ways. If you're off grid, you would use a battery to charge during the day while you're, while you're generating energy from your solar panels and you'd use, you'd use that energy at night. Off grid systems are typical in very remote regions where they don't have a grid. So they're off grid, they need batteries. Increasingly over time, we're going to be seeing stationary batteries become a part of a home-based solution such that you'll be able to charge batteries from your rooftop during the day and then draw energy off of those batteries at night while still relying on the grid for extra backup and additional battery, additional power uh, source, power supply. I will say there's a there's a maybe an, an unintended consequence when uh, my wife and I acquired an electric vehicle a year and a half ago. I found that my behavior regarding driving changed, whereas before I I wouldn't jump in the car to <coughs> grab to drive down across town to get a carton of milk. Now I think nothing of it with my electric vehicle because right. I'm being I'm powering it from the sun, <laughs> and and so uh, it's lifestyles are going to change. It, and for the better, I think, once we realize that we can power our homes and our lives with solar electricity, um, maybe we'll take hotter showers, <laughs> maybe we'll s run the jacuzzi, you know? I'm not, I'm not <coughs> s saying that we should waste energy, but if we use it wisely, we can actually turn it around and, and improve our lifestyle. So what, if I were to go and, if I wanted to go and buy a solar system, what should I look for? Uh, first and foremost, I think you're going to want to look for quality of service by the installer. You obviously, not, maybe not obviously, but uh, you're probably not going to install it yourself. So you're going to want to talk to an installer, contractor, who's done it before, who has a lot of experience and has good recommendations. One of the things that my organization does is we maintain a, a pool of what we call qualified vendors. So these are vendors who we have a close relationship with that we vet. They're vetted vendors, and we constantly, continually check in on their ratings, their insurance, their licensing, and their bonding, and we occasionally check in on their customers to see what their satisfaction rating is. So, so that means when we when we send refer our referrals to our customers to one of those qualified vendors, we know that they're going to get good good quality service. Um, in terms of the technology. Um, to some extent, a solar panel is a solar panel. They do vary in a couple of ways. One is efficiency. Uh, the, m the more you pay for a panel, the more kilowatts you're going to get out of it. So if the, the same size? Sa panels are all the same size. Okay. They're, they don't vary in size <coughs> to speak of. Uh, maybe certain applications on marine environments or something. But um, if you have limited roof space, you may need to go to a more expensive per panel, higher efficiency panel to get enough power production from that limited roof space. At the same time, if you have uh, a low incident angle, so you don't, you don't have direct western exposure, but you have a lot of roof space, you can load it up with inexpensive panels to, to make up for that um, less than uh, optimal incident angle to the sun. Um, you can also look at if aesthetics is an issue, if, if the panels are going to be on a front facing roof visible from the street, if you have a, an urban house, you might want to go with a panel that's all black or not. It just depends. So there are, there are some aesthetic considerations. Another consideration is where they're made. Um, yep. th that's a really interesting question because, um, I mean, made local, made in the United States is, is important. Uh, that's an important consideration for local economy, local jobs. Um, but at the same time, many companies that manufacture locally are actually owned by international companies and have, in, have yet other investors from other countries. <laughs> it's, a, it's very much a global economy 
And I, I think, um, personally, I wouldn't be that concerned about where the panel's manufactured. I'd be more concerned about quality of, of that manufacturer and uh, the, you know, the expectancy and the warranties for, on that product. You want to check the warranties. Typically, a warranty on a, on a panel or a module is 20 to 25 years. And then also look at the warranties for the um, inverters. If you go with a, a solar installer who's been in business for a while, they're going to have a, a set of products that they stand by, that they, that they rely on, because no installer is going to want to put on uh, a module or an inverter that's going to fail and right. require their, their after-sales support. <coughs> so exactly. uh, it gets back to working with an installer that has a good reputation and has been in business for a while. And I like to work with local companies that are locally owned and operated. I like to see, back to the sustainability thing, I like to see my money invested locally. Um, the people that own those businesses buy their groceries at the same grocery store exactly. I do. Their kids <coughs> go to the same exactly. school. <coughs> it's, it's building community. It's building local <coughs> economy. When do you see, I know I've seen, <coughs> I've seen the new, the latest in, in, in solar it are s solar generated roof tiles for new construction. Uh -huh. When do you see that actually being a reality in the market and being affordable? Well, companies talk about rooftops or solar tiles um, off and on over the years. It's not a new technology. It's, it's something that's been tried uh, with varying degrees of success over time. Um, there are some new products that are, that are being talked about that are being possibly introduced th in the coming year. I, I, I've spoken with my local installers that I work with and asked them and Generally, the, the opinion is to be not the first to the game, right. but let someone else do that, yeah. and then we'll come along later if it works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, because what, what, what's going to happen with that is you're going to have roofers who have to learn about solar, and solar installers are going to have to learn about roofing technology. So there's like a huge learning curve. There's almost a whole new industry segment that will have to be created. And it's, it's an unknown. We don't know how it's going to work or how reliable it's going to be. But I think, um, I think it's an interesting concept, and I think it's a good one. Um, it's something to, to keep an eye on. But I, um, at this point, it, this year, I, I would be a little bit careful about early adoption. Okay. Is that something that could be treated as a regular, as a shingle? So in other words, if you had that wall is in direct sun all the time, it's what I would call a hot wall. Could you use those, those solar tiles on the wall? Well, right, that's, that's exactly. That's true, that is true. Um, these solar tiles don't have to be on the roof. They can be on the wall. They could be anywhere the sun shines. Um, rooftop solar is, in a way, kind of a misnomer because we're sitting under, for example, solar panels that are not on the roof. Right. Uh, they're under a canopy. Panels could be on awnings over windows. Um, we're going to be seeing te emerging technologies where, with thin film technology where maybe a window covering can generate electricity. Really? It has the silica matrix built into it and yet it's translucent and functions as a window. Or, um, solar tile, solar pavers on pavement, yeah. parking lots, roads, walkways, those are things that are actually being piloted now in Sonoma County. And uh, that's also an exciting technology. So uh, it's, it's a good time to be alive, you know, when it comes <laughs> to solar. I really do, I really think that. There'll, there'll be uh, you know, technologies that make it and some technologies that don't, but overall we're moving forward, we're moving away from fossil fuels. I think everybody understands that we need to do that. Uh, the, the writing's on the wall, that that's happening. And uh, the, the solar revolution is really, really the way to be. Excellent. Yeah. Thank well, you so much. I learned so much today and a, it's just thank you. I, that's all I can say is well, thank, thank you very you. much. And hopefully hopefully our viewers will learn as well. And if they don't mm -hmm. have solar, I'd like to know if they, d they decide to go with solar. I hope so. Yeah. Well, and also, I encourage the viewers to look at, look for a local nonprofit in your community that focuses on solar. And, and you know, the thing with a nonprofit is you can trust them as, an, as a reliable, unbiased resource. And uh, wherever you are, wherever you are in the country watching this, Google a local nonprofit that deals with solar and you won't be disappointed. I what a great way to start. So you can yeah. actually, if you don't, if you know nothing about solar, you go to a group like yours right. and you go ahead and educate the consumer and provide them with all the contacts for a solid, dependable installation. Right. Yep. That's the way to go. Excellent.